Elhamdülillah. Fâzı uzu billahi min şeytanir radîm. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Etiyullah etiyo Rasûlullah emri minkum. I always a reminder for myself and I'm the Qur'aji, Sada'ifa, Miskeen, Zalim, Jahal and but for the grace of Allah that He keeps us in existence. Alhamdulillah I think then maybe one of the first if not first book to read is the reality of Hajj. It's not for people who, who are going to go make Hajj, that's too late but to understand the way. If you're going to make hajj then alhamdulillah that too but this is the symbol of the way the book Realities of the Hajj is about our hijrah and the pilgrimage. So if we don't understand where we came from, we don't know where we're pilgr pilgrimaging to. So that's all of the symbolisms in the hajj is the hijrah because every year is a hajj for us. Every year's intention that we, we meet to where Allah wanted us to be and to reach to the eternal Hajj which is the Kawthar oceans. That's why the twelfth month is the secret of Surat al-Kawthar. So if we don't understand from the secrets of Hajj then we don't really understand what pilgrimage are we on. And that the door of this pilgrimage is not about finding myself. Not about where, where am I, you know, what station am I, what, what, what is all about my I-ness but that I don't exist. And in the real reality of accepting I don't exist, only then will Allah show you what your existence is. We have to negate ourselves. When we want to know our station and we read Qur'an to find out all about ourselves, we come on paths to find out what are stations and huge maqams. This is not effacing, effacement to be a nuh, to be nothing, the Arabi I don't exist, that I probably should have never made myself to exist, I want to be nothing and that I want to know about La ilaha illallah and the realities of Muhammadun Rasulullah Then the realities of the Hajj book and all the realities on the articles of Lam Alif and what is the secret of Mecca? I saw one of the questions on the live broadcast, very good. Those Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The kinds of questions that we should be asking is that this is the month, this is the realities. So, well, what are these realities? So, it means that you have to struggle in a Mecca state where you got the message, you're just now coming to this understanding to your reality and it's years of struggle. Not that I'm now going into Medina two weeks later but that I'm in years of struggle against myself. And then as a reality Allah grants us our movement towards the love of Prophet and then the questioner posed the question, yes that's true that only with the presence of Prophet in the world of light, Medina to Munawwara, it's the city of lights we have to enter to because we have to follow the way of Allah and the, of Prophet and the companions. Means you struggle in Mecca, you enter into Medina, means now you're with a dress of light and immense power of light, only then you're allowed to go back into the reality of Mecca. 
and there's no more battle because it's, it's true haramain. The first haramain was not haramain because it was all fighting. There were attacks against Prophet ﷺ, there were all sorts of difficulties. So yes, that gives our clear understanding of our lives. We struggle, Allah grants a love for Prophet ﷺ, we run into the world of lights asking Prophet ﷺ for support through the world of light support us in our struggle and only then when that light and sincerity enters the heart of the servant then they truly are entering into the real Mecca. Why? Because Allah is not in heavens on earth but in the heart of His believer. If you're with the light of Medina means you're Muhammadiyoon, now your hijrah is real to Allah's presence. How could you achieve Allah's presence when you didn't have the reality of Prophet with you? So these are how people should be pondering. Everything that Prophet brought for us are the haqqaiq. So when people say, I don't know what this shaykh is talking about, it's simply just right there. Allah gave them Mecca, they had to go to Medina and only from Medina they could go back to Mecca and conquer. Means they reached Allah's presence. They didn't reach Allah's presence in the beginning. That was the, the 13 years of struggling. And this is the example that Prophet gives for all of mankind to reach and to, to follow his sunnah, his way, follow his example and that's the example, inshaAllah. That's a very good question, alhamdulillah. What we got for tonight inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Jazakallah khairan for everything Sayyidi. Uh, could you please expand on Mulana Shah Naqshaban's holy honorary titles of Fardul Alam, Alif Lam Meem, and Shahi Kul, Kaf Lam in relation with the holy companions being dressed by Kaf and Lam? Not at all, <laughs> you, you confuse me, yeah. Too, too many kaf, lam, lam, alif, lam, mim and no. <laughs> yeah, so no. As alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, when you said Bismillah Rahman Rahim contained the names of the prophetic household. Does Ba stand for Imam Ali salam, Seen for Sayyidina Zara salam, Meem for Prophet and Rahman for Imam Hassan and Rahim for Imam Hussain? No, we have the articles on the website. So we have the, the article that the huruf is 19 letters and that represents Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussain and the Bi'ismi Represent Imam Ali salam, Allah and the seer and the secret of creation khalq, khaliq he's giving to Sayyidatina Fatima Zahra salam. so under Allah's Fatima Zahra salam, Rahman Imam al-Hasan, Rahim Imam al-Husayn and Liwal Hamd is over all of them is Muhammad salam, is over the whole of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. He is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem We have the article on Nur Muhammad, you go to Nur Muhammad on the search and, and type in uh, the article of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and has it all there with all of the, the in-depth uh, writings and quotes and hadith and Qur'an everything inshaAllah. Imam Ali is a hadith that describes that I am the Ba in Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, I am the Nukht under the Ba and then goes in the hadith of Imam Ali Salaam begins to describe how he's the Nukht under the Ba of Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. But these are, yeah, many different realities of the huruf inshaAllah and these are the gatekeepers, Mulud al-Bab, 
So the ba is also the gate of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem because it unfolds all realities. Because all the Qur'an is in 30 juz, all the 30 juz in 7 verses. So means all of Qur'an is in the 7 verses of Surah Fatiha. And all these 7 verses is in the secret of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So that article is important to read because it gives the reality of Prophet and the reality of Ahlul Bayt as the secrets of, of this kawthar and of this oceans of reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Nurjan Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. I would like to inquire on how to perform zikr of La ilaha illallah correctly. I do not understand from reading the app specifically on the breathing part. Do I breathe in at the same time as saying La from the navel to my brain? Once reached to the brain, I then hold my breath, then move to my right torso with Ilaha, then strike my heart with Illallah, then only I exhale. I have no idea. You have to get the meditation book. That you see the light coming in, La ilaha illallah, that the breathing and the practice of breathing is different than the dhikr of La ilaha illallah. So you get the meditation book, learn how to make your connection with the shaykh, learn how to do breathing, breathing in and breathing out, inhaling and exhaling. So this is called breathing meditation. Dhikr of La ilaha illallah is for a limited time but it's not meditation. So you're moving light from La ilaha illallah that the light of your breath came in, La to your forehead, Ilaha to the right and from the right into the left is it illallah into the heart. So that's a light and energy that goes into the heart. So that's done for just a short period of time, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah so that the Main focus is as you're moving this light around is that illallah is to put an energy and light into the heart and then feel that sort of hitting into the heart and, and pushing and burning into the heart. And then it opens up its understanding, La ilaha illallah, La hit your head so that remember this path not based on your head. And then there's a reality on the right. And then, illallah into the heart, <clears throat> shallah. But the main thing is to do the meditation, get the meditation book or go to the articles online and make the connection with the shaykh, how to, to be nothing and see yourself in the muraqabah, do the breathing and the connection, this is the most powerful. Later on you can do the dhikrs and the practice of the dhikr of La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. But it's not the meditation, the meditation is the connection and then breathing. And then you need that for your wazifa, the awrads, the etiquette. You have to be in a state of meditation anytime you're doing any of your practices, you're praying, anything you're doing. So that has to be the pillar of your practice. So once you mastered your meditation, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, connect with the shaykh, feel your heart being connected, see the light of the shaykh entering into your, your being, then you pray like that, you do your zikr like that, you do every practice with that connection. Then different types of energy meditations, zikr meditations, those are all secondary, third, fourth to the foundation. The foundation has to be based on the madad and the connection with the shaykh inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah May Allah give you long and healthy life. Allah bless you. Holy Prophet was given a clear instruction to migrate after 13 years. How do we know when to move towards the city of Medina? The city of Medina will move towards you. So sp spiritual movement is much easier than the physical. So it means that we have years of struggle to struggle against ourselves, struggle against ourselves, struggle against ourselves and to be abirin, 
because we're now in a, a state where shaitan played with everybody to make them a fast food society. Everybody wants something in five minutes. So once we have patience and that we're in it for the long haul, that we want to struggle, we want to come against bad desires, we want to come against bad character. And we try so hard to achieve these realities, we become patient you know with testing and difficulties and, and uh, continuous support, continuous activities, continuous khidmat. As you see the shaykh, so there's no difference. That's why you have a shaykh as a guide for you, as, a, as an example. So for over 35 years they're doing the same thing, they're continuously doing their practices, continuously conducting their majlis and continuously being tested. And along the way when Allah finds satisfaction in the fight because the, the struggle is for me and you, victory is only in Allah's hands because He knows what the victory is, not people. People may say, oh I have to have a, like a lot of wealth, I have to have a good job, I have to have you know big house, I have to all these things that means that Allah was happy with me. Absolutely not. Allah may not be happy with any of those things, He may be happy with those things. But what Allah prefers is the fight, is are you willing to fight against your devil? Are you willing to you know get up and struggle and are you willing to sleep on the floor? Are you willing to pray? Are you willing to drink a lot of water so all night long you keep making wudu so that don't sleep deep. Train yourself when you're young, don't sleep so deep. So these were all fights, this was a fight that you know, fast often when you're young because as you get older and medicine and everything becomes very difficult. There's not a battle that you start at you know 60, 70 years old, there's a battle you start at you know 15, 20, 25 when, when Allah gives you youth. Then you fast, you sleep on the floor, you struggle against your sleep, you drink lots of water all night long so that you're up making wudu. So your sleep is never so deep, why? Because you always want to be subtle, you always want to be able to hear and feel. Some people sleep like they're in a coma of the dead. Ten people can't wake them up, means shaitan all night, long, all night long violating them. Others they're so subtle that if shaitan even tries to come near them they're alert and they sense everything. And that's what we want to be is hyper alert, not hyper dead. So these are, these are training, we have to condition ourselves to the state. You know military trains like that. They train them how not to sleep, not sleep deep so that they're always alert, always alert. Where they got all of these from? Sufis and, and spiritual masters. They understand that for you to be alert and, and not to be spiritually attacked you have to have this hypersensitivity. And even when they sleep they can feel and sense and see through their sleep. These are all the trainings inshaAllah. So they don't come you know in two weeks say, nothing's opening for me, what is this, what is it going to happen like that? Has to be a lifelong process. As soon as they struggle when Allah finds happiness in their struggle then Allah gives them little openings and opportunities here and there. Some people even say, oh I had openings and when I came to Naqshbandiya everything closed. Say, yes definitely because openings that are not under control they destroy a person. So many other tariqahs who don't have control over the veils, they basically give their students recite these things and these are all the students that uh, become charlatans because little bit opens, no perfection of character and they start talking to jinn world, they start doing ruqyahs and ta'weezes and all sorts of uh, crazy things. You say, how did they get stuck on that dimension? And that's exactly why. They didn't reach you know through their TSA and security check, they didn't go through all of those security checks, just things started to open for them because the shaykhs were not under control. But alhamdulillah Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah is, is a very firm control in Divinely Presence. As soon as they take the hand there's a seal on, on the student, nothing opens. And then as soon as they do their practices when the shaykhs are, are witnessing, Prophet is witnessing the conduct is correct, that the, the person is, is good in their character, they can begin to open. 
I don't know if anyone ever applied for a government uh, security position, they go to six, seven years of your history and they go to all your neighbours and ask about you. This for government clearance, imagine for Allah's clearance. They go through everything that you're doing, every type of character, every type of action, give you every type of temptation, see your response to those temptations, everything. Nothing comes your way that's not under their security check and not outside of that security check. And as a result Allah finds satisfaction, the person is sincere, they're disciplined, they're, they listen, they don't go wild, they don't have wild character, they don't talk out of wild adab. And they'll be tested in that and then what happens Allah gives them openings and they begin to feel the world of light is opening for them. They feel the immense love for Prophet is opening for them. So it's not your brain having to know, your heart will know exactly how it's… Uh, what, it, what is this feeling that we're talking about. There's no having to guess if a fires came to you. There's no guessing if what you felt in your heart and what you saw in your heart not your eyes was real, you'll know it's real, it's not even something you guess. People are wondering if it's like something you'll catch like a bus moving or a mosquito in the room. It's not like people close their eyes and say, Shaykh yeah, yeah, I think I see flashes of lights like flashlight. So no those are like your eyes trying to catch the jinns in the room, that's, that's nothing, that's not vision. Your eyes actually have to close because it's not from your eyeballs coming out your skull. As you tip your head, when you close your eyes your heart casts a vision and through your heart is like a screen of a vision, there is no doubt in that. It's not something you're trying to catch with your closed eyeballs through the, I see these shadows running around the room, no that's, not, that's nothing to do with anything. So your person will know what Allah's opening for them, So. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Alaikum As Salaam Could you please advise as someone who was raised Christian who in my childish way when I was little loved Isa, peace be upon him, how best to with my heart love Muhammad peace be upon him? Well, from the secrets that we gave you that he's the son of Sayyidina Muhammad how more can you love Somebody if you love Sayyidina Isa know that his father who art in heaven is in reference to Sayyidina Muhammad and the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad is Hazrat Maryam in which Allah says in Qur'an, we chose you above all women in creation. Chose for what? What Allah is going to choose a woman for? For His most beloved creation Sayyidina Muhammad And what was the clue? Surah 19 because we said 19 in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem so that those who know the code would know, oh Allah is giving us the code of 19 Surah 19 and then naming after a female, a woman, why? Then she must be really important and have an immense role in this whole reality. And then lo and behold, oh this is relationship to Sayyidina Isa And Sayyidina Isa is buried in Medina to Munawwara right by Prophet is going to be. His station and the burial plot is right there in Medina and Rosa Sharif. So alhamdulillah Allah led you to this way of teaching to understand. Nobody's giving up any love, actually you've intensified it and corrected it. Because anyone calling him God and, and, and showing uh, images in inappropriate clothes, beaten up by shaitan is a complete lie, a falsehood and uh, it is a horrible insult to his reality. Sayyidina Isa was very firm, very hard and didn't have more than 12 disciples because they ran away. He was not an easy person to be around. Prophet has 124,000 companions. So you can tell that the, the rigidness of Sayyidina Isa was very tough. So this is the correct understanding and the immense love that once you have for Prophet then this is a, the natural family being reunited into their reality. 
inshallah <coughs> Keep making lots of salawat inshaAllah, that opens the heart, has immense power and light inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So does the leaving of Mecca and going to Medina and then conquering Mecca symbolize that the heart can only become the home of Allah with Prophet with them? Please forgive yep. my wrong understanding. That's what we asked, that's what we just talked about at the beginning. That was the question that we, we read on the YouTube and that, that's a good way to, to contemplate when we talk. The why Prophet is moving back and forth, why Allah moved him around back and forth like this? There must have been deep realities and it, it is symbolic of our lives has to be the same. Is everybody has to come from idol worshipping and incorrect worshipping because everybody's idol worshipping because they worship uh, idols of dunya, money, cash, cars, everything is an idol in this world. How to come to the true worshipness of Allah And once they come and they want to fight towards the worshipness and we have the articles on, on the uh, who are the Rabbaniyoon and and the, the lords, the arbab, that be, before people can claim that Allah is their lord, you have to fight all the lower lords of desire, smoking, drinking, bad character, anger, lustfulness, all of these are lords over people because they, they govern the person's character, Though those all have to be killed. So there's a lot of fighting, a lot of, lot of struggling against you know your anger, against your, your desires, your, your all the things that these shaitans are trying to put onto people. Don't smoke, it's toxic and poisonous, you definitely don't drink, eat halal, eat good, make du'a over things, everything. Those are all huge fights. Before they can worship Rabbi al-A'la they have to destroy all the lower lords whom are governing them. So that's why then tw 13 years in Mecca means a state of continuous struggle and the fight never ends for the believer until Allah finds acceptance and begins to send light and light. And our greatest support is the love of Prophet That's why the guys released the video that, if not for this teaching how do you think you're going to be saved? Do people really think that they're going to fight shaitan and, and they're going to stop all their desires because they want to stop the desires? No, that's why all of those guys are hypocrites. Those madhab of people who say, you don't need anyone and they comment bad on the videos and they go to their web pages, it's all, all forbidden, really, really bizarre forbidden things. And that's, that's what shaitan does, he makes people to be hypocrites. That don't get help, don't ask for the madad and support, that all you do is, is, is enough and then they go to, to their lives and you see their lives are in complete shambles and upside down. So it didn't work for them. But they become mouthpiece for shaitan to, to tell other people, it didn't work for me so also we want it not to work for you. But what works is when they have the love of Prophet that love transcends many supports, sends from all the ulul am, seen and unseen because they're all immense lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad Anyone who wants support make salawats, anyone who wants the attention of Prophet support the milad, do mawlid like we're doing three, three days a week. We're the only group doing this three days a week. Where you go, if you can go even to the headquarters it's but two days with no milad. So we're the only group doing this, why? Because of this immense love for Prophet and the immense power that we know this contains a power, this has a najat, this has an immense, immense sort of power into the heart, salvation into our families and our hearts. And that, that's enough that it, it sold me on the process that there's so much power coming from the durood, the salawats and the milad 
and the intention for milad that it's a source of every barakah in our lives. So when people think, oh, oh how am I going to get the nazar of Prophet and very easy. Pick up your tasbih, make your, your durood and do like the shaykh does is that your whole life is about the tashrif, how am I going to raise the honour of my Prophet? If I love him so much how am I going to raise the honour? I'm going to go everywhere and give food in his name, I'm going to support the milad, do the milad, promote it, push the articles everywhere about the importance of the birth of this immense rahmah. So do you copy everything the shaykh is doing Why and why is he doing it? Because it's immense source of power. Because we need in our accounts immense, immense barakah because of the sheer number of people who come. And the only reason they come and every difficulty becomes ease for them and everybody is receiving all these blessings is not from the shaykh, it's from all these love of Prophet All the milads, all the majlises, all of this made these accounts of the shaykh huge. So that anyone who comes is receiving all of this immense barakah and that's the secret of barakah. But the one whom is stingy with their salawat, <laughs> even they came to visit us, yeah, the comment was the Hajji Shahzad is, why you guys do so many salawats? Or you guys like salawats too much? I, can, you, can you like salawats too much? No. You can't even compete with the angel which is non-stop in a perfected state, in Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala Nabi What type of praise, what beginning and what ending? When Allah is making durood sharif and the angels are making durood sharif, we come immensely short on our capabilities. It's not even a drop in the ocean of, of how much Allah loves Prophet Anyone who wants Prophet to visit them? Make the the sharif, support the mawli, do mawli, give food for the sake of Milad and Nabi We described in Israhi wal Miraj what Allah did, He sent His angels, archangels, not small angels, He gave the ark ones, the major ones in the heavens that the heavens are frightened from them. They came to greet Prophet brought jubbas and clothing from paradise, brought water to wash Prophet from paradise, gave him a buraq for his own ride into this dunya. Allah shows infinitely how much He loves Sayyidina Muhammad so that we would get a clue and say, be careful in life. You see how much Allah loves Prophet For those who love, do as much as you can to show your love. And those who don't love, be careful because Allah shows a lot of love. And if you should come against whom Allah loves, then it's the, it's the downfall for your whole society. Take a look at France. As a mamlikat and as a country they came against Prophet and insisted on those horrific, ridiculous uh, images, Allah destroyed them. They're a country that has nothing. They produce nothing, they import nothing, nothing. Not even french fries are theirs. So not, not a country will exist that comes against Prophet Yeah, we should call them like Chinese fries or something. <laughs> but there is no way, no way to, to try to insult and to come against Prophet and for you to still exist. Their existence will be nothing. So it means this is a source of power and immense, immense blessings in our lives. Anybody wants blessings? Make your, your program and show how much you love Sayyidina Muhammad Why? Doesn't it make common sense? You get the attention of all awliya, right? As soon as you want to do mawlid, when we first started the milad the Nabi and then people would say, oh why are you going to do the milad, maybe nobody's going to come, maybe this, maybe that. They don't understand the system. When you understand the system, as soon as you make intention for mawlid the Nabi there's not a single awliya for samahi wa firart that doesn't come to support you because all the other awliya are looking at that one saying, what's going on? This is for the love of Prophet 
So they're not going to risk that, nobody's like, there's no more nafs. So anything that has to do with the love and propagation of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad immense support, immense support. Every difficult to be, to be taken away, every opening to come and every, every account to be filled because of that love and that blessing. They say, well, well this immediate difficulty doesn't go away, well be patient with that. But the account is filled from Allah's immense, immense love. So this was an immense secret on our success and the immense secrets of all spiritual people. They understood the source of power, the source of blessings and the blessings for their community. It's not in the person or personality of somebody in the walk around say, this one he's a king, this one's a sultan, this one that doesn't mean anything. The only power you have and the only blessings you have in your account, how much you love Sayyidina Muhammad And if you did it right your accounts become big with the love of Prophet and a lot of barakah, a lot of blessings. Anyone who comes to their door will be filled by those blessings. Not titles, so you just think. <laughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the secret of Sayyidina Salman al Farsi being in Medina with his life struggle during hijrah and his position as Khwaja Gan in Tariqah and then being in Ahlul Bayt? Yeah, we have the whole, <laughs> those are a whole like so bad. I think in the life of Sayyidina Sulaiman al Farsi, we have that. When, when do we usually talk about that? That was the symbol, Sayyidina Sulaiman al Farsi is a symbol of love. All the holy companions they give us each a story of how, how to love. He served from a very wealthy family, Zoroastrian family, he left to find the last messenger of God but he put himself into service. I believe he served a Jewish rabbi, a Christian monk and many, many years. Some say that he must have lived six, seven hundred years because he served many masters and he lived a life of service and all his service one master would die and say, okay go down to this master and serve this religion, serve this, serve this and always saying that I'm waiting for the signs of the last messenger in which I want to live my life for his service. And that becomes our immense realities. So this is the dalil and all the companions are the dalil, they live and died for Sayyidina Muhammad and for the love of Prophet And he had amassed some money when he finally found out that the, the Prophet of Allah has appeared in Medina to Munawwara. How many years of struggling he amassed some money for it, he found traders and said that, if I give you some money can you take me to Medina to Munawwara, say, yes our caravan actually is going in that direction. And as soon as he gave him money the caravan started, they took him to be a seer, a captive. They took all his goods and all the money he made from serving other people. So how Allah, Allah was tough on Sayyidina Sulaiman Farsi, took all his money and then he became a complete captive. And he entered into Medina to Munawwara as a slave. Not on free will, he came to Prophet's door as a slave. He entered to enter into Medina to, to reach his haqqaiq, he was enslaved. And his owner was a Jewish merchant and, and entered into Medina as a slave and kept asking that, I want to go and see the Prophet, I want to go and see the Prophet of, of God until finally he got permission. Imagine how all these years of struggle he finally got permission and then when he greeted Prophet he told the story and Prophet knew who he was, told the companions that listened to his story and that Salaman is my Ahlul Bayt, it's my family. Means that your way to Ahlul Bayt is through your bloodline and light line 
but through your khidmat also. That you can put yourself in a service that's so beautific that Prophet will claim you as his family and immediately the ladies of the household they did not have to cover because of his presence. It was that high of a, a reality and that he hadn't fought any wars and he hadn't fasted any Ramadans. So the companions were astonished that what type of service he did and how long was his service all for the intention of being with Prophet Why? Because Allah grants based on reward, not your fiqr, not your usul. He had no usul, <laughs> he didn't make any battles, he didn't fast any Ramadan, he didn't even make any salahs. So how he achieved this station of proximity to Prophet was through ishq and muhabbah. Because Allah can make all the amal to appear later. But the most difficult was to have this type of love that you would, in, in, you would put yourself to be asir, to be captive. Why? For one day hopefully to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why the companions have astonishing realities of how much and Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashir how much they struggled, all the holy companions. And that was their secret is that they struggled for the love of Prophet InshaAllah grant us from their nazar and their love and that they watch over us and bless us and make our love to be of that reality and where we fall short that they lift us and correct us and perfect us for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Means anytime we're doing these things out of love you can imagine how much they loved Prophet and how much they would love to make us to be better in the eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad How much they would come to correct us, you know like you can't imagine their love. How much they want to, to correct our amal, how much they want to give us where we're coming short because we love and they know love because they have. These are the masters of immense love for Divinely Presence and the love for Sayyidina Muhammad so mind can't even fathom what type of madad this brings, how much barakah, how much blessing it brings. You don't think it makes them ecstatic when we do majlis of Salli ala Nabi That's all they dreamed of, a day in which people would propagate the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah this brings every source of barakah, blessings, takes every type of difficulty away, every type of sickness and hardship away. InshaAllah with uh, Allah's rida and satisfaction and this is an immense uh, source of blessings in our lives, our family and our communities inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah so How can we clean our ears, eyes, breath to get Siddiq character after having too much garbage all day? Yeah we have on the meditation book, you have to get the meditation book, how to meditate, how to wash, what's the secret in wudu, how to do on the energy book, on how to clean your energy on a daily basis. We have the outside wudu that everybody seems to know and they, they use a lot of water. But the inner wudu, how to clean inside, how to when you take a shower sort of clean your soul and visualize your soul coming and washing itself away from all of the filth of the body. How to clean your eyes with the water so that you visualize your soul being washed and all the bad images that not to affect the soul. So we have that in the energy book and the energy practices on how to wash the soul in your shower that you meditate your soul is whirling and washing away all of the, what the eyes are trying to put upon. Because the eyes are just the window to the soul. So when your eyes are looking at things through the window shaitans are throwing dirt onto the soul and into the heart. So when we sit and we meditate in the shower and visualize your soul coming out and washing in the water and that to wash away these and awliya use water to throw their burdens. Many times they'll have water near them, lakes, rivers, water, any source of water where they can go and throw their burden into the water. 
so that not to stay upon themselves. If they don't have that then they have to sit and meditate in the shower. So that the angelic force and the reality of water will take the burden away from them and the burdens of people that are trying to come towards them, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Please forgive my ignorance. Uh, when Mulana Shah Naqshaband Qaddasallahu Siru light was created 7,000 in Allah's years before awliyas, what's the reality of his physicality coming after some time? Physicality and spirituality have no importance. People who, who think through physical, that's why the Naqshbandiya, I can only speak for Naqshbandiya, is what we call Waisi. But we even explained it much easier is the world of Malakut with the science of light, light has no time. So before when the shaykhs were talking they would say, okay I was spiritually being trained by this shaykh or by that shaykh and by this shaykh. So, oh, oh he was like 500 years before you, how is that possible? This is astonishing. But now through science people understand that the world of light has no time. So then these shaykhs whom they passed away, Allah describes them, don't deem them dead in their grave, they're very much alive. So it means the physicality is of no importance on our spiritual path. Because we're not dealing in the realm of physicality. Once you open the door into the realm of light then you have access to all these lights. You can go to the beginning of time and sit with Sayyidina Adam and you can go to the end of time and sit with Sayyidina Mahdi and Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa You can take fires from them, knowledges from them, madad from them. And once you enter into that door, into that room of light, you have access to all of their souls at any time and all times because your soul is now always in their associations. And then you come out of that door come back into this realm of what we call physicality. So if you wanted to visualize it like two rooms, you go in one room it's physical, everything is separated by virtue of being physical like glasses, everybody's in a glass in a cup. You have water in a glass. So in one room of dunya is a hundred glasses with hundreds filled with water. You open the door and you go into the realm of light, there's no more glasses. So it's just one ocean of hundreds and thousands of drops of saints and souls and prophets and everything. It's just one ocean. But based on your purity as soon as you enter into that ocean you can traverse into higher states and then go down to different states. But if you wait to death and you didn't purify yourself but let's say you're not under punishment but you're at the lowest level of belief, you enter into that water but at a very far distance. You can no longer traverse into the depth of that water, you don't have the ability. It's like somebody throw you in the pool and say, swim, you can't, you don't have that ability. So by purifying our light on this earth, by building our spirituality on this earth, you can become deep sea diver. Once you enter into that room Allah says, you go into that ocean and they go into the depth of that ocean to where Sayyidina Adam salam, Sayyidina Mahdi salam. And it goes infinitely greater into the worlds of light and into the paradises and above paradises into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that has no time. Kulu amrum wal irada, Allah describes that prophetic heart that every amr and irada in which every command and the will of Allah exists within the Muhammadan heart from Surah Yaseen. So just imagine then the immense depth of the reality in that ocean if they can enter towards the prophetic heart, means this the center and the power of that ocean. It has immense, immense, immense power. 
So don't think in, in singular forms like cups and glasses and bodies and people sitting there separate in their bodies, there's no more bodies in that realm. It's an ocean, ocean of realities. They can manifest out of that ocean like a light appear and then they go back into non-manifestation into the ocean. And we just have to traverse the depth of its realities, you have to have the security clearance to go deeper into its reality. And that's why the benefit of doing our practices now, So I don't need it I'll just go in the grave. The grave is a fixed location, if you enter the grave and you didn't achieve what you needed to achieve, that's it, for all of eternity you locked. So this is the time, that's why Allah said, now is the time to make your bargain. That we take from them their dunya and we give to them akhirah in exchange. So that that has an immense reality of their soul that Allah will take your soul reality and exchange you eternity which is what? Muhammadan soul. If Allah takes your temporary light we take from them, we purchase from them their dunya. Means what? Your temporary light, say, Ya Rabbi don't want my temporary existence. This temporary light you gave me that is allowing me to manifest like an avatar on this earth. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? It's just a robot, it's not real. Grant me from the eternal light. But all eternal light is called Muhammadun Rasulullah Then you've made an immense bargain. Ayatul Kareem is in Surah Tawbah. We bought from them their dunya and gave to them akhirah in exchange and said, this is the best of bargains. In its haqqaiqs just one of its understanding is Allah will take your temporary light, give you Muhammadun Rasulullah And then Allah goes into your bayat and that you are now completing your covenant with Allah Why? Because the covenant and the bayat is going back to Prophet You accomplished what you needed to accomplish on this earth. Is he recognized who Sayyidina Muhammad is and that your light belongs to Prophet and that becomes the reality of the bayat is that your ahad and covenant has to go back to Prophet so that you can reach who your reality is only with the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah Then imagine how deep you can dive, that's why they're called Muhammadiyoon. The divers who go deep into these realities they're all Muhammadiyoon. Other people are astonished and say, oh I've never heard this before, I don't think it really exists. But then there are these people in Indonesia that they dive for pearls and they go literally hundreds of feet down. And most people on the outside say, it's impossible, if you dive that deep you're going to die. And then the scuba divers follow them and say, no these, these people actually dive, they've been trained all their life. And they dive very deep with no oxygen and they come back up with no embolism and oxygen danger. Means they're trained in diving for pearls and realities. Then what do you think about the souls that have immense love and their souls they keep telling people, Muhammadiyoon, Muhammadiyoon. The Muhammadiyoon soul, well imagine the depth in which you can dive to bring the pearls from the heart of Prophet Others that can't do that, why? Because they don't deem themselves Muhammadiyoon, so where are they going to get pearls from? They're still hoping Allah is going to give them something. <laughs> you can wait a lifetime, I don't think it's going to happen because the khans Allah, the treasure of Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad So Allah wants us to recognize that my treasure is Prophet If you want the treasure you have to love him. You have to love him more than you love yourself. If you love him I will love you, I'll forgive you and then dress you. Then these deep sea divers they come up with immense pearls from that reality. And people are astonished, they're, what, what the heck is this, we never heard these things. Well, because it's from the depth of the heart of the love of Prophet
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Sorry if this is a little off topic. A little bit. Uh, the Mayans disappeared around 3,000 years ago mysteriously. Were they taken by the jinns? Any spiritual insight into this? Please forgive my ignorance. Yeah, you have to always remember that when we watch TV, 90% of it is satanic because there's no awliya on television propagating knowledges, right? So 99% of it is a satanic knowledges. They take everything evil and make it to be good. So these were a society that were demon worshippers and they gave themselves what Allah describes, people whom were dealing with jinns, they took them as their Lord and Saviors. What do you see on, on ancient alien show? These guys with their hair sticking up and chariots of fire and because I love watching their, their goofy stuff. Why? Because they take their… they take the jinns as their lords and as their saviors. They say, no, no they made us and they planted us here. And then they show movies and they, they go through the, the Bible, they go through different religious books, yeah, yeah they made us and they planted us here and Allah says, they took you as lords, creators and saviors that you're coming again to save. What are you coming to again? They come and they eat people, they're not anyone's lord and they're not saving anyone. They came to oppress and abuse people and during the Mayan culture those were demon worshippers and on a given day they would kill 10,000 people by putting their hands straight into the chest and pulling the hearts out because they believed that the heart was the throne of God. So it was horrific, horrific demon worshipping. And on those temples were people walking and describing and people are telling them, you know they would kill 10,000 people a day and throw the blood and the bodies down the stairs and people walking saying, this is so beautiful the energy here. It's like, oh, people are talking about this, is like a mass holocaust was happening in these locations. And they were doing this so that those jinns would build the structures and they were worshipping them and they were making astonishing things which is nothing from their power. But it would give them authority amongst other creations. So the jinn would lend their… for worshipness they would create these massive sewn structures so that other people would fear these humans and this was their favours. So they modified it now and they give tech, technology to Western countries. So people say, how'd you get this technology? Well how you think they got it? Not from their cleverness, they made a deal with the different jinns and so they said, give us these different texts and then we'll become famous amongst these humans, we'll become powerful amongst these humans. So they're doing the same mechanism still. They lend favours in the humans worship and glorify them. But they're demonic. Always know that the mu'min jinn and believe, not the believing, the mu'min whom swore their allegiance to Allah and Prophet never intervene, never intervene. All of their support is unseen, unrecognized. They're not to appear, not to show themselves and not to take any credit or recognition otherwise they would confuse themselves with these shayateen. So, inshaAllah demonic. The Aztec demons are back, they're all on the border with these gangs, they're all Aztec the tattoos again. InshaAllah. Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surah al Fatiha. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, 
be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.